So it's been 10 years since the big financial crisis. And the question on everybody's mind is, uh, have we fixed the problem? Could it happen again? Are all the regulations working? Uh, if not, what needs to be done? And I think there actually has been progress. I, I tend to be the grumpy economist, so it's always no and it's terrible, but no, there has been uh, progress. And I think it encapsulated well. If you ask any of the big policymakers, and, and we've seen these interviews recently, uh, uh, Ben Bernanke, Janet Yellen, you know, re real big shots, uh, uh, has, are we in a better situation now than we were before? And the answer is telling. The answer is usually yes, things are better now than they were before because banks have a lot more capital than they used to. That's right, and that's a good answer. But what's what I find interesting is the deafening silence that follows that. Uh, what that tells me, and what I think is true, is that everything else we've done, the tens of thousands of pages of regulations, the armies of regulators, the, the pretense wandering around all the large international institutions that those regulators will this time see it coming and carefully tell the banks what to do. Nobody has much faith that any of that is working or will stop us from another crisis. But capital is the answer. We have a little bit more capital. I think nowhere near enough. And I think we missed the chance to substitute capital for all these regulations. Capital is where banks get their money from, not what they do with it. So banks invest in stuff, and they need to get money in order to do that. They get money from two places. Uh, they um, get money either from their shareholders, or they get money by borrowing. And what most people don't know is the immense amounts that banks borrow rather than get money from their shareholders. Now, these two sources of money have very different uh, impacts when things go bad. If the bank loses money on its assets, uh, and all that happens is the value of its shares go down. There's nothing shareholders can do about that. They can, the value of your shares went down. What do you do about it? You go home, you know, you might be mean to the dog and have a whiskey too many that night, but there's nothing to do about it. You can't run and get your money back. If it looks like you're losing money and you've borrowed it, then people can run to get their money out and the bank fails, and we all know that banks failing is, is a bad thing. Given that fact, you know, even now, what we've gone up from is about 5% equity to about 10% equity. Banks don't like equity because uh, when they borrow a lot of money, they can go to the government to get bailed out in bad times. They like the value of those bailouts. So they, they complain mightily about equity. But we've, as a profession and as a policy community, we've come to understand that more equity would not be costly for the economy and it could eliminate financial crises for, for forever. The regulatory paradox is really weird. Bank assets, what are banks doing with their money? Well, they're lending it to people. Uh, and as, as mortgage loans, business loans, even toxic, toxic securities are oodles safer than, say, Google's bet on a self-driving car or Tesla's bet on moon rockets or whatever it is they're doing. Why is it that we have these thousands of regulators watching over the safest assets on earth, namely mortgages? Well, because they're leveraged up to the hilt with borrowing. If the banks had only issued equity to make those investments, and if when those investments lost a little bit of money, because that's all they ever do, uh, the equity values went down just a little bit, painlessly, no runs, no bankruptcy, no crisis, uh, we wouldn't need the regulators. The regulators could go off and drive for Uber or do something more productive with their lives. What I would advocate rather is rather than hard limits, you put in hard limits with as big costs, uh, a, a sliding scale uh, of um, rewards. So, so at 50% equity, it's nearly impossible for a bank to go under. So if there's 50% equity, do whatever you, whatever you want. If you want to go down below 40% equity, uh, then we're going to start putting the regulators back in. 20% equity, there's going to be a lot of regulators. And if you want to keep working, I, I think the way to do reforms is never to try to reform the existing thing, but to allow another pathway. So if big banks want to keep the way they are with 10% equity and thousands of regulators, go for it, guys. We'll, we'll just let competition come in the other way. I'd like to add, too, so one problem with equity ratios is their measurement. Uh, the accounting is a nightmare. So I'd like to see a much simpler 
formula too. The formula I like to see is the market value of your equity divided by the face value of your debts. Uh, that can be measured uh, instantly and clearly and gives banks a, a strong reason for not just targeting the absolute minimum but having a big cushion uh, above that. Uh, I wish we could keep going in the equity direction and I'm afraid of what happens in the next crisis. So, so let me now be the doom and gloom type. If we don't, what happens if we don't fix it? The last financial crisis uh, involved trillions of dollars of government borrowing and spending. Uh, when the financial crisis happened, our government immediately borrowed about a trillion dollars in order to bail out here and there and inject it in TARP and so forth. Within the first year, another trillion dollars worth of stimulus. Uh, the overall crisis and recession racked up the debt from uh, about $10 trillion overall, same around the world. Uh, and now we're ever more in debt. Um, there, yeah, the next crisis will be bigger, and the next crisis might involve not mortgages. It, the next crisis never comes from the same place. The next crisis might well be sovereign debt itself. People no longer trusting that governments can pay back their money. Well, then the firehouse is burned down. Uh, so it would be really, it's really important to move to a banking and financial system that doesn't have crises all of its own uh, before we have to face the sovereign debt issue, which is the big looming issue that we all face when, when the firehouse uh, that is supposed to put out financial crises is burned down. So bottom line, uh, where are we? There has been progress, uh, both intellectual and regulatory. That progress is more equity. We have a big regulatory gargantuan sitting on us that I don't think anybody really trusts is going to work uh, in the next crisis. Um, and we've only really gotten part of the way there. 10% equity is not really enough to, to, to make the banking system immune for more crises. Uh, so I, I really hope we can focus back on it. And the problem is people are sort of focused in the couple of years after the crisis and the discussion has sort of slowed down. Nobody wants to think about this. Everybody's uh, you know, entranced with whatever Trump's latest tweet is. And uh, uh, the slow, patient process of reform seems not to be going anywhere in Washington, as well as around the world. The large international institutions are, are much more enamored with, with coming up with bigger and bigger dreams about how they're going to regulate their way around this, rather than the simple, clear answer, more capital.